Good morning. For our time of gospel meditation this morning, we're going to be looking at a passage that shows us God's mercy to the sinner. So if you have your Bible with you, would you turn with me to Psalm 103? We're going to be looking at verse 10 together. This is a psalm in which David breaks out in praise and blessing to the Lord. And he breaks out in praise and blessing to the Lord because of the many benefits of being in a covenant relationship with God. And we see those starting in verse 3. David tells us that he knows that the Father has pardoned all of his iniquities. David knows that the Father has healed all of his diseases and redeemed his life from the pit. And he knows that the Father has crowned him with loving kindness and compassion. David sees all of these benefits, and he knows that every single one of them is from the Father. None of them are things that he has obtained on his own. But David knows something else, and we see this in verse 6. He knows that everything that God does is right and just. David tells us that God's deeds and his justice are righteous. What this means is that everything that God does and everything that God assesses is done perfectly. There is no error, there is no mistake, there is no omission, there is no oversight in anything that God does and in anything that God assesses. And David knows that in particular this is true about God's assessment of his sin. So as we come to our passage, come to our verse, it's helpful to keep in mind that David understands that God has examined him in the innermost recesses of his heart and God has found him to be guilty. David knows that God has measured him according to his perfect standard and found him to be lacking in regards to what is necessary and what is required to be in fellowship with him. So let's look at verse 10 together. David writes this about God. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. And David understands that his sin is truly offensive to God. He understands that the justice that he spoke of back in verse 6 demands that God avenge himself against David's sin. But in verse 12, David tells us what God did with that sin. David tells us that instead of avenging himself against that sin, God took his sin and removed his transgression as far as the east is from the west. Let's just think about that for a minute. How far is the east from the west? In David's mind, the east and the west were an infinite distance from one another. If sin is moved that far away from a person, we can be sure that when God evaluates that person and God considers that person, any reckoning or consideration of the sin of that person is entirely gone. Our New Testament tells us the role that Jesus has in the removal of sin for the one who turns to him. And we see that in the book of Hebrews. The author explains that very concisely in the opening verses of the letter. Before the author goes on to explain how Jesus is superior to the angels and a number of other things, the author writes this about Jesus in chapter 1, verse 3. When he had made purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus made purification for sin. He provided us with a cleansing from the guilt of our sin, and he did this by offering up his own body as a substitutionary sacrifice in place of all of those who would trust him and look to him as their Savior and their Lord. And that is good news for us today. And that's how we want to remember Jesus today. And because of that, when God considers us and he evaluates us before him, he sees nothing in us with which he can charge us. And that is good news for the believer. So I encourage you to remember that and take to heart the message that Jesus is the one who removes the sin from all of those who place their trust in him.